And just recently, the tr- one trailer that he built up had refinished. He just recently, finally, he sold to John C. Riley, who is the actor from Talladega Nights. And so that was one of an exciting moment for uh, for Colin Strickland, first of all, to be able to first finally sell a trailer that he's been working on and remodeled, but also to sell it from to John C. Riley, who is part of Talladega Nights. So that was a big moment for him. More riders are right here coming through. That's our leaders, right, coming through. That is. Alex Wilde took that turn. And you could see that there – Alex kind of gave a flick of his head to warn the riders behind him, to warn Keegan and uh, Russell that they were coming up to a hard right turn. They're hitting a little bit of pavement. Frankie, this this looks pretty good. I mean, they're uh, they're they're working well together, and I'm I'm curious how long it's going to be until they start to to make their moves to attack. But at the moment, this works to their advantage to be together. One thing to keep in mind for the men: lap two of two, so they're two hours and thirty five minutes. We're guessing three. It's been it's been pretty fast. If the if the group behind has made contact and uh, and they're able to uh, and and actually here they are, um, we've got our chase group is now five strong. So we've got Andrew Lesperance, Cole Patton, Lance Hate it, Tobin Ortonblad, look how fast Kyle Lance, Trudeau, Lance Hayden on the front from Legion of Los Angeles just going at it. Cole Patton in that orange jersey just behind there. So Andrew Lesperance has got wrapped up. It was a 30 second gap that Andrew Lesperance was down on the three riders, but they have been wheeled back in. So we're going to get a time split here in just a second. And then we're going to see how much uh, the time gap is from the three leaders to our chasers. But this is going to be a great sprint also. This will be a fantastic group to be able to see who comes out um, to be able to get at fourth place. And, again, points are going to be valuable. You have to be able to think about that. It looks like a little bit of a gap trying to be able to open up in the back as uh, they tag on to each other. And Tobin Orton Blatt are the only one in that group of five who's not a part of the Grand Prix. It's like, Frankie, I think we are close to the finish. That's our leader right now. Keegan Swinson coming around that final turn. He had broken away, and Nay is your 2022 Grand Prix winner. What an incredible ride by Keegan Swinson, taking, really waiting to the last moment to be able to take time out of all of the other riders, and so he's going to be able to take the win here. The 27-year-old from Utah winning the Sea Otter Fuego ADK. Now here is a chase group. There is a Russell Finsterwald who has come through. He's going to be unofficially, I believe, in second place, just back. So Keegan Swinson in first, Russell Finsterwald in second. Alex Wild has come across also in no third place. Yes, Alex Wild. I'm not seeing where he is down there. And then we have that chase group of five just behind that are trying to be able to make it in. So and remember, top, that top three are in, right? Going for fourth place now. Every place is going to count. So this is going to be an exciting finish for that group of five. Every place counts in the overall Grand Prix. We've got our top three finished for the day, but that we're going to see an exciting sprint here, Frankie. And we're going to talk about Kyle Trudeau, Cole Patton, Andrew Lesbronce, and Lance Hate it, and Tobin or Orton Blad, any sprinters that, that are your favorite in this group of five? Well, I think Cole Patton with his experience, I think uh, he has a pretty good uh, quickness also. But Tobin Ortenblad, uh, I'll go with him because of his size. He's a big, strong rider. And so if you're coming onto the cement, you're going to be able to use your power, although it is a little bit technical. I mentioned those final sections are a little bit twisty. Lance Hayden, also the best all-around rider there is, right? The guy can do cross good, road good, mountain bike good. So he's very experienced also, the rider from Legion of Los Angeles. Uh, Hayden, is an, and it's amazing to me that he's only, he has one race in his legs, which is Tour de Murrieta, because he's doing a fantastic ride here. And has no no stranger to leading out riders and being there for the sprint with a team like Legion because of the sprint power in that group. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be looking for him as well. Cole Patton, very strong rider. But Alexi Vermeulen, man, this is, a, this is an exciting group to see come into the finish. We'll see who's going to make the move. Yeah, Lance Hayde, also a previous under-23 national road race champion. So he knows how to win from certain groups. But this is the technical part that goes across the top part. So now they're in the, you know, the gradual uphill along the side of the course before they get into the kind of the windy, twisty part to get into the start-finish line. Riders in the back trying to be able to get around each other. Going for the pass, but on the front, I think that is Tobin Ortenblad, who is just powered away from the rest of the riders right now. Only about, you know, two, three more turns. They're going to come here. They have a little bit of an S turn right here at the end of this stretch. And then they're going to come onto the cement and finish it up. And you can see this little S turn that I'm talking about right here. So waiting right now. 
Swenson was your winner. Finsterwald in second. Alex Wild is third. And who is going to be four, five, six, seven, and eight? You see how important positioning was for this sprint, that last little bit. Uh, you know what? This is Swenson's teammate. That's, uh, that is Swenson's teammate. You're right. Um, at the, uh, coming in coming for fourth place and we're going to send it down to the finish line that was Tobin Ortenblatt in fourth place and Ellen is with the winner at the finish line of the uh, Sea Otter Classic Fuego 80k. I'm here with the winner of the Lifetime Sea Otter Classic presented by Continental, Keegan Swenson. Keegan, I'd like to start by just saying congratulations. This is a huge win. Yeah, thank you. So. Obviously, we talked a little bit before the start. You were feeling good. Um, so can you tell me a little bit about how this win feels for you? You've had an amazing season so far. So how does this stack up to your other experiences this year? Oh, this one's pretty big for me. I've always kind of struggled here at Sea Otter, to be honest. I've never really been able to put one together. And uh, excited to be able to finally uh, put it all together and take the win. So. so what do you think was the difference? If you've always struggled here, did you do any preparations differently to be able to take the win today on on a very big day to win uh you know all things considered i mean i think the uh the two lap format suits me a bit better it's a bit longer and uh i think cape epic was also good prep for me just get some a lot of fast i mean there's eight days of cross country racing more or less so i think that was great preparation so yeah so do you think that today's effort felt a little bit easier than maybe that of cape epic that's what sophia had said prior to the race as well yeah i mean it's definitely different this course is really smooth and really fast there's a bit more group racing uh I hit it hard early to try and separate it. We had a good group. We worked together and try and put time into the guys behind us. So, so speaking of that, actually, can you tell me how did you end up getting a gap? Last time we saw you all, you were all still together. So, what was that final moment that gave you that time going into the finish? Uh, yeah, I mean, I hit it really hard at the start to try and separate the group, and we had I don't know, there's maybe six or seven of us working really well together, to try and put time on the, the gravel racers behind us. Uh, and then going into the second lap up the, the climb, or the, the first climb, I put in a little bit of dig to, sep to separate, and uh, Russell and Alex were able to go with me, and we worked together the rest of the, the, rest of the lap. And then going up the last climb, I uh, figured there was the, la the last steep fire road. I just put in a big dig to try and break Russell off and was able to solo in. So Incredible. That must be how every rider wants to win, to be able to come in solo into the racetrack. Must have been a really amazing feeling. Yeah, definitely the best way. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Keegan. Congrats again, and we're really excited to see you at the next round. Yeah, thank you. Enjoy. Thank you. One of the most talented riders that we were looking for today, Keegan Swenson, taking the first round of the Lifetime Grand Prix presented by Mazda. Um, he's been on everyone's minds as a rider who can be consistent throughout the series, uh, probably a large favorite for the overall, but we're, this is just the first race. Um, and uh, we're seeing the top 10 of the men here, Keegan followed by Russell Finsterwald also coming in solo and Alex Wild, they were in that group of three on lap two. Uh, and back down at the finish line, Ellen has found Russell Finsterwald who finished second. Let's, let's hear what Russell has to say about the race. All right, we're just waiting to be 